Mm -hmm. uh, unlike the sort of bigger sea stars, the basket stars are not predating on the coral. Or it's hard, we couldn't say. Uh, that is something that I am unable to say. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people know. I don't know so much about the basket stars, but from what I have seen, I don't think that they are actively predating on the corals, just like the Ophiroids. Whereas the sea stars, are, uh, some of the sea stars, uh, feed directly on the coral polyps. They, whereas these uh, most likely use the corals as a uh, as a raised habitat, just to give them some elevation from the seafloor so that they have better access to the to other food material that's in the water column, just mm. like some of the Ophiroids. Thank you. Huh. The size is truly impressive. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's beautiful. It is beautiful. And, you, you know, for something as relatively simple as, you know, mounting two green light lasers, we did miss them quite a bit in the archaeological <laughs> surveys of those very large wrecks. Absolutely. Scale Absolutely. was a definite problem, and Atlanta does not have the scaling lasers. Yes. We came across one section of hull. I thought it was a surfboard at the shape at first, and mm -hmm. it was the whole side of the ship. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, it is very difficult to artists to get a scale of uh, objects from looking at images and videos on this we have a reference scale so that's why the leases are very important so although the composition of corals have changed you'd say we're still seeing quite large ones yes. like we were last night yes Absolutely. And abundance. And abundance, absolutely. I'm impressed by like the thickness of the axis of these the corals. Exactly. This, the, the branching is the main branch. Like yeah, it's just so thick. Very strong. The sheer number of basket stars. And they're also the similar color to the corallium, hemicorallium. Looks like a tree almost. Yes. Like Amazing. Yes. I know places where there's lots of coral, f uh, sea fans or uh, corals in high abundance in the deep sea, they are termed as coral gardens. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the exact threshold for that. But in my idea, I would generally call these coral gardens. Yeah. What's that? I agree. I'm sure there's a more formal level yeah, right of designation what qualifies as a coral garden. And especially what we were seeing last night, rather this morning. What's that? No, you're good. Good, good. I think it'd be pretty important to know the, the abundance and diversity on this seamount given that this is a potential s potential area that has been trawled on the top. Exactly, absolutely. Yep. Have fun, Mia. Also a bit sad to think about as well. Absolutely. But it's also indication and doing such explorations allow us to understand how activities such as trawling affect these communities, because unless we can show the evidences, it becomes very difficult to put in conservation measures and plans at a policy level. That's quite some abundance. I don't think I've ever seen these many chrysogorges in this high density of chrysogorges. Yeah. And it is like the corallium or hemicorallium is acting like a shield over the chrysogorges in this particular view. This is amazing. Yeah. It's 
beautiful. Even the view from Atlanta tells us about the about the density of the abundance of the corals in this place, and especially on those parts which are jutting out from the main structure. Come on, five. Yeah, this. I'm looking for flow or some type of uh, current here, just marine snow, for evidence of why this particular rock face might be of benefit, but not seeing anything right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a cover shot. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> and there Thank are you. a couple of Ophiroids probably practicing uh, yoga early morning. It's not early morning <laughs> for them, but mid-morning yoga <laughs> stretches. Yoga? <laughs> <laughs> With two arms stretched out. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, these Chrysogorgia are very, very large as well. Exactly. Very large, very abundant. And we can see smaller colonies as well, which are probably of the same species. Mm. So it is a very, it's a thriving habitat, definitely. Not only are we seeing the older, bigger colonies, but also much younger. colonies interspersed with each other. Can you uh, swap the uh, starboard camera for me? There's some iridogorgias in here as well. That is a tall, a very tall chrysogorgia. For listeners who are watching, we're now at 1,796 meters depth. Uh, will it be possible to zoom in on that bamboo coral? Yeah, we're seeing another sacrocalic sponge, and beside it is what looks like a ferrate sponge both glass sponges and we see some iridogorgias, small iridogorgias or smaller iridogorgias. Push in a bit there, video. a bit more. Yes, this looks like uh, a bamboo coral genus Keratoisis. And can we zoom in on the parts where it's branching? Any one of the... Yeah, right. Yeah. Give me a second. Yes. yes, absolutely. Just to check whether it's a nodal or internodal branching. So nodal, the polyps will be okay. at the Push nodes? The branches will arise at the nodes. Oh, the branches, okay. Yes. 
an intern nodal is in more. between the yes. nodes. Yeah, from here it looks like internodal branching because the top branch is coming up from the white part and I can see a black ring above that. So from this view, okay. it definitely Go looks ahead. like an internodal branch. Thank you. Thank you so much. So in addition to our visual exploration, Hercules is also outfitted with the capabilities to collect samples. And um, we are really grateful and privileged that we are able to do so um, thanks to collaboration between agencies and most especially um, the resource owners of this special area, um, the Hawaiian people. And uh, we have good reasons for collecting the samples. I need to zoom in there to get uh, 10 meters squares. <coughs> it's um, not responding. And there's a couple of different kinds. Oh, so we out collect. Because the boat was so far away. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Thank you. Let's see the uh, boat on the vehicle still. Oops, too far. <laughs> Here we have another, uh, we have a things. little goji almost at the center of the screen right now. Because we can see the spiraling of the skeleton. The firework coral. Mm -hmm. So samples are collected um, for bi biota that represent possible new species expanded records, uh, meaning we find species in areas that we had not known them to be, or potential novel association. So an association is like predation or symbiosis that we hadn't seen before. Do you think those are bacterial mass, this discoloration there? Yes, yeah, yeah that's what I would think. And of course, the numbers of samples are very carefully considered beforehand and Correct. limited as per permit. Yes. So there are only so many things that can be taken. And there's care taken also to make sure we don't take, you know, the one of only one type of species. So we need to see something a certain number of times to know that it's abundant enough that we can then take a sample safely. That is correct, Tom. Yes, and that is very important as well. Because push in there real quick, Janet. The goal is to expand our knowledge with while being as less destructive as possible. It looks like coarser green mm -hmm. than I was expecting to see. Yes. So is this still a bacterial mass? Mm, doesn't look like that. Given how granular the structure is, it can be push some kind of coarse sediment for some reason has accumulated Green, there. Uh, oh, of a different color. Yeah, different color and grain size. But I wouldn't call it a bacterial mat now that we are zooming in. Okay, go away, thanks. There's a small recruit of a chrysogorgia on the rock as well. Are we seeing a difference in color even within, even, even between the chrysogorgia colonies? Some of them are definitely more reddish and pinkish than the others. Which I'm not sure can be a factor of the angle of light that's 
shown on them. So the colors that we're seeing, and I know you talked a little bit about this before, they're the result for some corals of um, biochemical processes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Biochemical processes, there's no evolutionary advantage or disadvantage to uh, losing the color or keeping the color, and also the fact that uh, there's a need to be camouflaged in the environment. So we are shining light on them and we are seeing these colors, but in a water column, red penetrates the least amount. So there's an advantage to being in the red spectrum of light. So everything will appear dark and black. What is that? Uh, Just another kind of a yellowish color. Yeah, that looks like a crinoid, which is sitting on a dead sponge, yeah. probably, yeah. because the basal structure looks more like sponge, but the organism on top of it is definitely a crinoid. Yeah, but these, um, these species don't live in a world of color. They live exactly. in a world of darkness, and in fact... This will be the first time that light has been shown on them. Absolutely. Th does it look like a shrimp on the chrysogorgia, the very red? It looks very large if it is. I can't really tell from here. Yeah. And it could be an ophiroid, but it looks very thick in comparison to... Yeah, it's against the elongated. Can be one of these large nematocarsides. Sponges. But we are also seeing different colorations when it comes to the corallium and hemichorallium. Yes, this dead bird's nest like a, f like a structure is probably a dead sponge that we are seeing there. And we are... The basket stars are placed on top of the larger hemichorallium or corallium uh, Mm, fans, whereas we are seeing more of the ophiroids, the, I don't, this, what's the common name for ophiroids? Brittle stars. Brittle stars, yes. The brittle stars on the more orange uh, colonies, the more orange corallium or heavy corallium. the hemichoralliums are not the bubblegum coral, are they? Uh, Paragorgias are the bubblegum coral. I believe, given the recent reclassification, Paragorgia is now in the family Corallidae. So these are not the bubblegum corals, but they look very similar to the bubblegum corals. And you said earlier that the way to tell is the... Which one is the stiff one? Yeah, so the corallium, so the hemichoralliums are supposed to be more brittle mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, the bubblegum corals are more flexible, if I may use the word, so they'll not break like when you're trying to get a sample. There are other sort, subtle differences, but at times it can be very difficult to identify those. So our more common ophiroids, like the one that we are seeing on this, which I believe is a chrysogorgia or iridogorgia, not a metallogorgia, uh, and the basket stars. So both are uh, in the class of Euroidea. You know, it would seem... Uh, quick zoom there, just so we can tell Mia she missed it. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That would be another um, of the Solasterid sea stars. Uh, pull out this a bit. Thanks. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten arms. Yeah, I'm guessing we're not going to see an underfed sea star in this area. Uh, hopefully so, not. So, uh, you know, what controls the population of sea stars? I mean, this is a feeding ground. Uh, that's an interesting question. Okay, can go uh, But not a question for me, but I can definitely... Uh, yeah. I, abundance of food is one factor, but... Uh, and there are others, yeah. Yes. The, recruit, the recruitment of sea stars... They have uh, food preferences, depth preferences, depth, not preferences, but depth tolerances, which can uh, determine the kind of sea stars that we are seeing in different areas. Well, no, I, I really don't know. I'm uninitiated, but it, it looks like a well-fed sea star. Absolutely. But again, I know nothing about sea stars. Yes, that is definitely a well-fed sea star. And that was another macro-urid uh, fish swimming, swimming by. And we're seeing some ferrade uh, glass sponges, chrysogorgids, crinoidea. And on the corner as well, there was another sea star on the corallium or hemicorallium. So I know in shallow water hands, we have, um, at least in my part of the Pacific, we have an invasive species called the crown of thorn starfish. Mm -hmm. And that one um, does run rampant and eat coral and destroy reefs most of the time. So it's an interesting, it's a valid question. One we don't know about the deep sea, but they are the one of the primary predators down there. Yes, there are several predatory sea stars, like you said. We're again seeing two bamboo coral. Um, yes. Yeah, that's also an American Samoa, and um, there have been, you know, a number of diving missions there using rebreather technology and divers going in to try to mitigate the population of those yeah. very predatory sea stars. And also, from what uh, the little I know about the crown of thorn sea stars is that, uh, yes, they are predatory, but they're uh, large population. Uh, the the fact that it is a problem for the reefs is also because of the changing temperatures and the changing ocean conditions that's allowing them to uh, allowing the population to increase at a rate which is probably higher than the uh, their normal rate and anything that would have predated upon them or uh, so overfishing is another problem which is leading to those. So there are several factors whenever we see such ecological problems uh, more than uh, the organisms being problematic. They, they never are. Because if everything exists, they exist for a reason and they have a role in nature and it's well balanced. It's an intricate balance. But as soon as we uh, come in and destroy that balance, that is when we start seeing these problems. So, and that's why probably we don't see the see these predatory sea stars being a problem in the deep sea because there's a balance that's keeping their population number under control and everybody's the, everybody has pressures controlling their population sizes and when that balance is tipped it it becomes problematic well, well said. said yes And even the deep sea is not immune to our to anthropogenic um, effects. I know Han said we've been lucky not to see a lot of trash on these seamounts, but that is sometimes something that is found on these deep sea explorations. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Are you checking all the um, niskins for uh, microplastics as well? Uh, 
I am not uh, filtering these for microplastics, uh, but I have done that in the past um, when we did the cruises in California. I did collect some samples and filtered them for microplastics and um, still doing my co final confirmation of analyses, but I have found confirmed microplastics in every single Niskin sample, um, with the most numerous being acrylic and uh, polyester and rayon as well, which is technically not a plastic, but is chemically treated. Oh, look at those purple coral uh, and a cup coral, and I think. And a cup coral. Um, so yeah, not for this cruise, but um, would be interesting to see. Push in there, video, please. That's not a, I mean, it's a, it's good for your thesis, but <laughs> yeah, not good for humanity. Right, not what we good, wanted, good but. Things. Wow, these, are these Do these look like this? Uh, no. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can we zoom, is that the full zoom? No. Oh, uh, that's definitely a mm. beautiful cup coral, probably Desmophyllum. Uh, if these are octocorals, they can be, oh, that is a bamboo coral stalk. So, these are uh, stoloniferans. Stoloniferans, okay. Overgrowing the uh, bamboo coral stuff because we can see the black and white uh, alternating pattern under the uh, purple polyps. Oh, wow. there's some and next to it too, no? Yeah. On the rock? Exactly, on the rock as well we can see them forming a chain. Wow. Beautiful color. Beautiful color and in contrast to the orange that's next to it, the or red orange of the hemichorallium. So what's diff the difference between the zoanthids and the stoloniferans? Why do they both seem to occupy the, the skeletons yeah. of these dead corals? Uh, stoloniferans are octocorals. Okay. Okay. Zoanthids are hexacorals. Okay. So these are, uh, colonial is not the word, but they basically uh, do not have a s main skeletal structure, but, but they grow over other, op other surfaces, just like the zoanthids. So it doesn't have to be a coral skeleton, or does it? It can be sponge. It can be sponge. Sponge stalks, coral skeletons. It's a crinoid. I can get a tighter shot there if you want. I have to put a toe out on the rock here. Many a times temperature and environmental factors act as uh, limiting factors for population growth. So it is very important. That is why when in the su surface layers or the, or the top layers of the ocean where we are seeing changes in temperature, it is uh, we are seeing uh, great changes in the abundance and population size of several of the shallower water. Uh, main taxa, the same that's happening with the jellyfish uh, jellyfish blooms because of the high temperature it's allowing them to breed at a rate which is much higher okay, than their can, uh, push in there uh, normal rates and also overfishing has removed their predators yes that looks like a munidopsis that's that's a good view of the cup coral We can also see some um, stoloniferans in the in the back, the yellowish lines that are growing over the rock. Sorry about the porch there, I got a little close. To These are heck, oh, octocorals. octocorals I yeah. see the pineal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love these biology terms. <laughs> Peduncle, <laughs> pinules. Yes. That's why they're called the pinnate okay, tentacles. Away, tentacles which have the pinules are called the pinnate tentacles. Pinnate. Yes, P-I-N-N-A-T-E. Uh, will it be possible to have a look at this? This is probably another chrysogorgid, but it looks kind sure. of planar in comparison to the others. And there was another ferrate sponge tucked in. I 
As Hans likes to say, Pinuel will be on the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Not my quiz. <laughs> I think this watch will fail desperately on a geology quiz, though. Yeah, I only know my, like, two terms, and I don't apply here. <laughs> and yeah. I know one and a half terms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll have to have Val come in and shadow yeah. and oh, teach us at some point. Oh, that's a beautiful squat lobster. So why do some of them move forward and the others seem to move backwards? Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. okay. Are those different mm -hmm. types of squat lobsters? I think they could, all of them can move in either direction. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, it would be nice to have a geologist on, on every watch, but we only have two on board, and even geologists need to sleep and eat, <laughs> or so I've been told. We don't want geologists and biologists on the same watch. <laughs> <laughs> Too much arguing. <laughs> uh, that does look chrysogorged like the polyps. Yeah, but it looks is, different, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's more planar, right? Yeah. There are planar chrysogorgias. In the family chrysogorgia day. Just a bit more if you got it. Uh, that's cool. That's, that's very light colored, too, in comparison. Exactly. Light colored, oh, plain shrimp associate. Yes, yeah, there's like mice and shrimps. They like to be close to the polyps because the polyps using the pineals to push down whatever they catch from the water. Mm -hmm. They just push them down towards the mouth, which is at the center of the polyp. So it's a good way of getting the concentrated food directly rather than catching it from the water for the mice and shrimps. So they'll mm -hmm. just go and take in the filter. Wow. They'll take the polyps' food. Yeah, what <laughs> it's. <laughs> are we good? Yes, we are good. We are good. I don't know what kind of a okay. chrysogorgia it is, but we have a good image of it to look at. I can go through the database. It's a well. tough world down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Savage little shrimp. And also, they probably <laughs> help with cleaning and protection. Okay, okay. So there's some give and take always. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> the last part was me guessing, so. Yeah, I gotta share your resources down here. Yeah. Or I guess not if you're trying to survive. <laughs> but it looks like there's more than enough to share in this yes. environment. With some beautiful crinoids. There's a there's a glass sponge in the back. We, it's too far for us to know what it is, but I don't see the glass sponge. Oh, it's small. We can continue moving. It's fine. All right. I think we are coming up on another one of those Echnomyces or Jasonyces bamboo coral fans again that we were seeing uh, earlier in the morning. Yeah, we haven't seen one of these in a yeah. while. This is pretty large. This is a bamboo coral? Mm -hmm. The large colony. The large, yeah. Remember we were seeing uh, some of them more whitish and the others with a yellow tinge? Mm -hmm. So probably an Echnomyces. This is the candelabra shape? No, no, no. no. Candelabra shape is more like it's one stalk and it's dividing. Oh, okay. And then you have branches extending vertically upwards. Okay. You know the, the candelabra shape is the typical uh, the candle arrangement. That yeah. That's a 
beautiful colony and it has an ophiride that's what it looks like yeah it looks like a pretty large one yeah and the base of this coral is also very large also very large and there's an angle what would you say that's a, almost a, what more than 12 centimeters i can't see where the lasers are oh they're in the center uh yeah it's like at least 15 right yeah in length, in width probably like 10, 12-ish, but, and also it's, it's a big base, but at the same time, given how mm -hmm. big the whole fan is, yeah, probably 15-ish in length, maybe 20 as well. Yes, the Stoloniferin octocorals, instead of like I was saying, they don't have the skeleton, but they're connected with, um, they're o obviously colonial and clonal because all octocorals are, but instead of having internal skeletons, they ha they remain connected by stolons, which are, uh, that like we see in plants as well, which are like runners. Uh, connecting different plants or different polyps in this case so they're encrusting so I, I was forget I was blanking out on the word encrusting before that was another cover shot by the way that <laughs> large coral <laughs> I think you're now it's about uh if there was just a book of cover shots, then the, what's going to be the cover shot of that book? Yeah. It's, it's in that it's standard. It's too bad government employees <laughs> are just, you know, anonymous uh, contributors. Right. Yeah, it would be lovely to have a look at that yellow. That is something that I don't think we have seen so far. At least not on our watch. No, not on our watch. And... It can be, uh, there are some uh, corallium and hemicorallums which are yellow. So, so in the family Corallidae, uh, given the pattern, that is what it looks like. But I would love to have more confirmation from the chat. Let me check. There are yellow. That's a cool picture you just took on. Yes. They're all cover shots, Jacob. This is a beautiful view. Beautiful color, too. Beautiful color. Can we, uh, will it be possible uh, to have a closer? Yeah, give me a second. Yes, absolutely. So this is a hemicorallium? I oh, we am. Think it is. I am still looking, honestly. Okay. I'm not sure. Do we have anybody in the chat? No. And with recent... Okay, Dana, fill your boots there. Or is it a primnoid? Let's check. Wow. Oh, I see a... A little guy, a little critter over there. On Can the you point it out? Squat lobster? It looks like a, is oh, it a, oh, probably oh, a shrimp. On the right? Oh yeah, I see. Can't tell what that is, but it's like oh, a I pale will. salmon color. It's more in the corner. Top right corner. Yeah. yeah. On the left. Oh, on the left. Oh, 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 I see. It's absolutely on the top. I see something top popping. Left. It's out of the frame right now. Oh, okay. Sorry. 
did not see that one, I'll say. <laughs> I think it is just a shrimp. Oh, That's and then it, uh, the polyps closed. Closing. Uh, is, can we get a closer look at the polyps, maybe? If possible, or is that That's full zoom? Yeah, we're fully zoomed in there. I can't really, uh, yeah, I might. We have a yellow primnoid paracalyptrophora, but this, the well, branching pattern doesn't there. look so much like that. Mm. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. I might be able to uh, come around the back and get in closer to the camera but yeah it looks you know it like to me but I'm not sure I'm also not sure I'm stepping away to do a ship to shore but the Pashana will have the still cam can we uh, see there are the yellow paragorgias there's a couple of shrimp moving across this yeah thing. also the internet being hmm. What depth are we at? 1784. There are the yellow plexorids, which are now paramarsiids, uh, which, so I was thinking more like these, but they, these are, this is deep. How are we on samples? Uh, we have room if we were to collect a snip of this. Uh, we have currently five biology. Okay. Uh, the one that you have in open in front. Yeah. Because primnoids have a more uniform pattern in branching, I feel. Uh, I'm Come up uh, slow as you possibly can. Um, uh, no, we're not going to sample. We just, um, yeah, we were just comparing. Uh, we were considering it for a moment, but uh, also there are plexorid and. Uh, Plexorids are paramarsids right now. Works. Experts, I'm sure they will be able to identify it. But to me, it looks like what used something that used to be in the plexorid family uh, has probably been moved to the paramarsid uh, recently, mm, or can be. Uh, it doesn't look paragorgia or a paragorgid. Okay, we have good images of it. Okay, you can go wide, thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, there are some deep paragorgias which are yellow in color. That's so beautiful. That is, it, that is a wonderful. Yeah, just stunning. Yeah, you missed it. We saw the craziest sea star while you were gone. We've Aww. seen about like seven, actually. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did. Um, huge balance. We had a really close zoom on one, too. Yeah, yeah, we did for a while. I was doing a ship to shore with my, my parents and their HOA community. They're, they live on uh, South Carolina. So there, there was a moment we did live. We showed what you guys were seeing, but it wasn't with all the sea stars. I wish they could see this image because it's so beautiful. It is. That is a cover shot. I want to frame that, but absolutely. Else. I was joking. You didn't really miss any sea stars. You, uh, there was one. There was one, but it was really there cool. There was one, but it's not cooler seven. than every other one we've seen. That's for sure. Yeah. This looks like overgrown by zoanthids now.
So right I'm, I'm going to come up just a bit more. Roger. So right now our uh, narrowed down IDs for this yellow DSC coral would be paragorn. Oh yeah, I, I'll I'll take it. I don't know if it. Yes. So beautiful. I think I took multiple. Yes, so current guesses so far would be a paragogia or a previous plexorid. Come up uh, a few more meters from it. And that is a beautiful crinoid as well, which is on the hemicorallium. Came up about three, you want me to come up a little more? Yeah, I'm gonna come around under you here. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm sure you guys talked about it when I was gone. Um, yeah. Is that feather? What is that feather duster looking thing? Can you guys hear me? I think they're uh, Daniel's they're talking to the best science, science oh, talk. Oh, got it, got it, <laughs> got it. I just couldn't hear myself in my ear, that's why I wondered. Shana, Mia was just asking what the feather duster looking That is a that is a crinoid. So we're yeah. seeing two different kinds of echinoderms here, different class, the crinoids and the ophiroids. At some point when we're not sleeping, mm -hmm. I wanna ask you all about these terms you use. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, they do look like feather dusters. I'm kind of miffed at myself that I'm not able to ID the yellow <laughs> fan oh, that I'm confused. You do you name you put out you throw out names like an encyclopedia. No. <laughs> oh no. I can probably get them down to families. Steve's not online? No one's chiming in in the chat at the moment, unless it's frozen for me, yeah. but I'm not seeing anybody here saying anything. I don't see it on my computer either. No, you guys are doing an amazing job, science team. Thanks, so are you, Mia, Thank and you. ROV pilots and video and everyone. <laughs> I'm really a, a proud to be a part of this watch team. Yeah, I talked to you, I talked all of you up with my, my parents and their community. <laughs> Aww. Thanks, Mia. Yeah, I hope you had a fun interaction. It was fun, after some technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can try a full zoom there again. I don't think I'm any closer here. I'm kind of bumping up against the uh, cliff. Thanks, Dan, for trying to get closer. Wow, yeah, that actually is a really good shot of the polyps up there yes. at the top. Yes, that is. It's your uh, feather duster in the DSC there. Oh yeah, that's oh, a yes. shot. That's cool. I love it, yeah. Who's here? Let's check. Who's in the chat? 
Oh, Pashana, there was a, I don't know if it would be helpful. It's from our um, viewers chat. They also suggested to look at the base yeah. of the portal. Uh, you want to go wide for a second? Well, did you get some images there, did you? Yes, we have images. Thank you. You can't quite see the base from this angle. I love those really soft pink, smaller. Yes, the chrysogonids. And I know Jake and I talked about this, but it reminds me of cherry blossoms. <laughs> they are very fine, you're right. That's a good yeah. comparison, actually. Uh, I see that Asako is online, so I'm gonna ask her if she can help us ID this. Uh, like, solid, like, that, that's brim see how uniform the branching patterns are for brimnoids if this is more like this I have I don't have words to describe it to <laughs> me with hands Yeah, I'm confused because it looks way more dense than the plexorids we see yes. here in these pictures. Yes, and also very different from the... Uh, it doesn't look exactly like the... Um, what was it? Uh, the Paragorgia, the yellow Paragorgia, and also doesn't look like the plexorid. But there are several different kinds, so that's why I'm confused. There's some good nice ferret sponges. Uh, Hemicora limbs, Chrysogorgids. I'm gonna come, <coughs> I'm gonna come back around and read. Yeah, the, I think, Elsa, you pulled it up, the Acanthogorgia. Yeah. Uh, yes, the Acanthogorgias can be strikingly yellow, mm. but so the problem like is that, uh, even though that is tagged as an Acanthogorgia, I was thinking it. about it, is so my lab mate James Aubrey he works on acanthogorgias and the little that I have learned is acanthogorgias are rarely this deep no, they can place. be and many of the acanthogorgias or colonies which were thought to be acanthogorgias are paramarsiids or paramarsiids given uh, the plexorids have also been known to that so it's a very I, mm -hmm. I am not the best person to differentiate looking just at the colony morphology and sometimes it's very difficult also because it comes down Ooh. to the structure of each polyp. I think it might be a Canthogorgia day. Yeah, yeah. so I, I know for sure, for example, like that is probably a Paramarsia, that is not an Canthogorgia. This picture in the ID guide? Yeah, oh. yeah, because it's very difficult and a lot of them fall in the Paramarsia clade, mm. what has been called a Canthogorgia. Uh, but it can be. How's that dozer rat Surf. doing? Ooh, we have a cool fish again. Oh, that's a big one. There's another fat sea star too. <laughs> Where is it, Mia? It was, it was it's that we're off screen. Oh. I didn't want to interrupt your beautiful commentary. It's more confusing commentary at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, can we have a look at the fish? Unless it oh. goes and hides it's under hiding. the rod. Yeah, they can. The, yes, this this colony actually looks like the one that we were seeing. So it can be an Acanthogorgia or a true Paramarsiid. Push in just a bit before I start. Yep. That is. That is good, a micro urid, and a big one. Yeah. Is that Loser. a grenadier or is that different? Uh, rat tail? Uh, yeah, the rat tails, macroeurids, let's see if we can... I know there's a tab open for... I was looking at the fishes previously. Oh, do you see that little one down on the bottom? Yeah. It's so tiny. Beautiful fish. It's quite big. Yeah, it is. 
If you look among the... It's like 50, um, 70. 70 CM. centimeters, yeah. yeah. There's that pink one there in the bottom left corner. The little pink yeah. one, yeah. yeah. Oh. Little junior. Little junior. <laughs> okay, so this is probably, um, you've seen this fish. Does it have marbles extending from the back? Mm. In the genus. Come up. Coming up a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Corifenides. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but looks like a Corifenides. Those are macroeurids or ragtails. Can I uh, bring your head to, uh, three. to the west? And that's a... Uh, oh, that what is that in the background? That's a, what is that? I think it's a halosaur. Yeah. No, the, the oh. yellow... Right there under the lasers. Don't tell me it's an octopus. Ooh. Is it? They're having a meeting. A yeah, like it looks like an octopus. It's in a fight. Yeah, we're it is. It is. It is. <laughs> wow. They're ganging up on him. <laughs> on on it. Sorry. Animals not have no gender. Yeah, is it like? It's, it's probably like a like female. It's if it's it's probably a brooding. Yeah, I'm not sure we can really say without. Yeah. If if we see eggs, then we would. I know there's a way to tell the difference between. Yeah. But, yeah. Um. Uh, I think it's one of their arms. I can't yeah, remember yeah. which one is longer. I remember after hours. Third of one. Yeah. Those are what? Yeah. Squat lobsters or crabs surrounding it. So that would be the first uh, cephalopod, the first uh, octopus, octopod that we are seeing in this expedition. I was just thinking last night of drawing an octopod here on the <laughs> boat so that we see one. <laughs> she manifested it. Yeah. Absolutely. Is that crab eating it? We cannot hear you, Jane. We you need to it. look at it, what's happening. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh. It does kind of look like he's... Exactly. They're exactly. eating it. Is it dead? This is very interesting, if so. I'm, it kind of looks like they're stretching out that arm, yeah. huh? Yeah. Wow. It can be dead, because on the top, oh, as you see how it's... Oh, it's it's kind of moving. Yeah. yeah. Or it's just because of it the water. It could be water. from us, yeah. This looks like it might be a predation event. Exactly. I wish I was down there eating it too. <laughs> 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 That's pulky right there. Yeah, it, the crabs are feeding on the different tentacles. Oh, that's brutal, actually. Circle of life, yeah. yeah. Even in the deep sea. Everybody Absolutely. Gonna eat. Every predation is. Wow, sad. I've never but observed anything like this no. before. No, no predation is sad, but at the same time, a crucial Good. part of the life cycle. Yes. Yes. So it looks like it's. And a very rare dead. sighting to see yes. in the deep sea. Absolutely. Ah. Predation events. Uh, look, uh, it is probably a seaweed octopod. Uh, yeah, it looks like it has ears exactly. on it. Exactly. So I would put it in the suborder serrata. Probably a grim potato, but I'm not going to go for the genus. If they want to. Is that the same as Dumbo them. octopus or different? Mm. <laughs> I know you're not a fan of the common names. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and yes, it definitely looks like a dead octopod that's stuck there and the... Uh, Lithoded crabs are feeding on the different tentacles, and if we zoom in on the mouth of that, oh yeah, you can see it. We yeah. can wow. see the oh. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, can we get a zoom on the mouth yeah. of that? So Dan, I know wow. you've seen lots of octopus. It is crazy. Based on it's the so commentary cool. I've heard from hours of watching this Nautilus, is this the first one you've seen that was dead and being fed on? No. 
It is always amazing. I want to say it's like newly, newly deceased, being that they change, they change real dark when they die. Oh, the color, yeah. Yeah. And also, given how less of it has been predated upon, it's, it has, but also in the deep sea, the conditions are such that the decolorations and everything takes true, longer. True, true. Uh, one of this particular uh, species. So, of, yeah. Our family or genre or whatever it is. My dad just said, did Jacob really just say that's taco poke? <laughs> 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 That is a rare event to encounter in the yeah. deep sea. Uh, sad, wow. but definitely a part of the life cycle, part of the natural cycle. So is this a squat lobster? Or it's a type of it's crab? It's a crab. It's a crab. Yeah. It's a little dead crab. And there's the little shrimps yeah. also. The mice shrimps and... Look at how you oh, double, he's double getting fisting in there. Him. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is fascinating. Can push in a bit more. <clears throat> yep, push in. Oh, wow. Feasting. Good. Yeah, it's always amazing to see the crabs feed and how oh. active they are and how intricate it is that the way they control the food particles wow. and direct them towards their mouth. Yeah, we are not disturbing his feast at all. Yeah. No <laughs> or their feast, sorry for gendering. It's not chewy, battle or sister. It's a little couple of shrimp in there as well. Or, yeah, I think so. Yeah, there are yeah. a couple of mice and shrimps. That, is that a small? I can't tell what that is. A different. Hmm. I want to see it just chop off a big piece with his claw. Yeah. There, there are there were what approximately three uh, litoded crabs feeding on the dead uh, octopus. Uh, oh. Yes, we have been talking here for a while about encountering and like seeing that. an octobot oh. but i'm sure none of us were expecting this yeah uh, this is a this is even a rarer event to witness in the deep sea yeah is that some kind of sand fly or something that's close to the that's kind of hanging on right there that's what they're trying to yeah determine Hmm. It's probably some amphipods, and I'm not sure what that brownish thing yeah. is because it's a little blurry from here. It's definitely crawling across rather mm -hmm. than swimming, though. Mm -hmm. And this also shows that this is a rare even for the deep sea because a lot of the nutrients that uh, nutrient uh, transfer to the deep sea happens from dead organisms falling on the sea floor. And uh, this is one such event. And yeah, there are, there are lots of mice and amphipods on the on the octopods, octopod even more on the right side. Those are definitely amphipods there. I could watch this all day. Yeah, it's beautiful how intricate the crabs are when they feed. Mm -hmm. They have complete control over what they are eating and how they are. They have excellent ta table manners. <laughs> yeah, no, no crumbs falling on the side there. No, nothing. Nothing gets wasted. Yeah, nothing against them. I usually like to smoke them first, but to each their own. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what that brown crawly guy about given thing how is. Of laterally compressed it is. Is there one inside? There's some look there's something inside.
Yeah, I could also watch this all day. Yeah. I wonder what led to the, the death of this octopus. Yeah. And if we will see any more. Yeah, yeah. Look at the head on that team. Oh, that's a good view of the... I what is that something. camera called, Dan? Porch cam? Uh, it's uh, brow cam or porch cam or we call it uh, bubble cam. Bubble. Bubble awesome. cam. Yeah, those are amphibods that are coming over. The large the ones brownish, with the brown spot. I think okay. so. Given the shape, that's what it looks they like. They just look really engorged from feeding, I guess. Mm. Wow. We also saw some fish in the area, but I'm not so sure if they've been feeding on it or yeah, not. Yeah, probably they're attracted and they were probably feeding, but the presence of the ROV mm -hmm. could have scared them. Yeah, I've never seen a uh, never seen a rat tail actually feeding. Yeah, no. I don't know what they eat. Uh, can we zoom out a little bit and have a look at what the other crabs, because I think there were three or four in yeah, the area. Yeah, see if anyone else is mm -hmm. feeding on portions of this octopus. Wow. Okay. I know that for several of the octopods, uh, at the end of their brooding period, they die. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the position in which it is stuck in, I am it not sure. Yeah. It kind of looks like that, but there's uh, a word. There's a word that um, they use for. Yeah. I can't recall it. I can. I will look it up. Uh, because the way it's stuck in, it doesn't look like that. It fell from no, the Yeah, it looks like it was mounted there. Exactly. Almost. So, or f it can be for some other reason that Is died. it senescence? Yeah. Yeah, they basically uh, wither away as yeah. they're um, rooting their, their rooting eggs. Rooting the eggs. Yeah. What was the word again? Senescence. senescence. Oh, senescence? Yeah. senescence? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Senescence is, yes, is gradually withering away, but, um, but there's another term for the octopods. It's specifically used for them. Yeah, we heard it quite a bit in the uh, octopus garden. <laughs> I can't believe I can't remember it. Yeah, I don't remember that term either. Yeah, the way it's uh, hanging from the corners, it sort of looks like it was purged here when it You want to try to get a stills cam shot of that? Yes, I did, but we're missing the... I could um, probably reposition. Yeah, probably a little bit so that we have the full octopod in view. Yeah, that is a interesting event to encounter. A very rare event to encounter in the deep sea, but at the same time a sad event to encounter. But also necessary. But the natural cycle of the ecosystem. We can see more mycids gradually coming in towards the Hans, we have a dead octopod. <laughs> yes, there's a dead octopod. Uh and we have a couple of lithoded crabs which are feeding on it and also some amphipods. Uh, no, uh, he's repositioning the camera a little bit so that we have the octopod in full view. Are I have taken a couple of shots of this view. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to uh, reposition? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. That's incredible. It is, it is incredible is sad but incredible and a rare even to witness in the deep sea. Uh, you might get one as the ROV floats up here, so Roger. be ready on the button there. 
I hope we will see some living octopods next. Exactly, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I was I got very excited when we spotted it. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a while to recognize that it is probably a dead octopod. Yeah, I wonder how long it will take for this octopod to be completely a long time. On. A long time because we don't see any big predatory fishes around. So sometimes if they are around, then it's much faster. Mm. But uh, if it's just the crabs or the amphibods, it can take a long time. Yeah, it's a good view on the still camera. Um, is the word, oh, did we find the word already for the? No. Uh, another suggestion from the chat was semo Paris. No. It will come back to us, I okay. need to. Push in just a bit, please. Oh, how's that one crowd? Good, thanks. Got a bunch. Cover shot. There's entire uh, entire PhDs on um, uh, decomposition in the deep sea. Yours or people in general? Uh, there's several scientists we've uh, worked with. There's uh, one in, in uh, BC that specializes in uh, what do you call uh, doctors who work in a morgue? Oh, mortuary? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, coroner. That, that coroner, coroner. Coroner, yes. yeah. Thank you. Sorry. It's been a long day. That's kind of morbid, yeah. The day you started. Uh, anyway, she she specializes in um, decomposition and deep sea, so done some interesting long-term experiments. Yeah. Growing up diving, you know, we know that octopus they like, you know, their holes and they like to grab rocks to fill their hole. Uh, but you know, those are little three, four pounders. You know, this guy. I want to see the rocks that he can move to make his hole, you know, and cover up. Mm-hmm. Can you uh, push in on the leg there? Good, thanks. Have some nice shots of those little brown things. Oh, yeah. The amphipods, I think. Yeah, you can see the tentacles starting to disintegrate there. The, mm -hmm. the suction cups look almost gone. Hi, everyone. This is Kara just joining after our ship to shore. And I just want to say this is crazy. <laughs> and I'm so <laughs> glad I was able to catch this. Yeah, thank you for helping me, Kara, so much. And Hans. Yeah, it thank fun. you. It was a really great session. I don't know if you guys know what cowrie shells are. Oh yeah, but, those. Um, yeah. So old Hawaiian fishing methods was because they they like oct octopus. They like to grab shells and everything to fill their hole. They would put a line on a big cowrie shell, bring it down, and then usually an octopus would come up and grab, try oh. and grab it, and then you just bring them up. 
still used today. Wow. Yeah, they had a basalt sinker next to that cowrie shell on that wooden stick, that barb. We find areas that were traditional fishing areas covered with those basalt sinkers. Wow. Yeah, so this, um, this definitely looks like a serrated octopus, right? And uh, in the family Opisthotiu today. And you were right, um, yeah, the tumbo octopuses are also serrated octopods. Um, I'll not go down to the genus level. An interesting fact about when they brood, some species can brood for up to four years. Yes. Um, yeah. So they really dedicate their lives to their yeah. protecting their, their babies and making sure that they yeah. hatch. Uh, there was a study at one point where they found one of these brooding gardens and uh, then uh, they went back to that the same place every year or every couple of months to have a look at the status. Yeah, we've been there with uh, Nautilus a few times. Yeah, there's some really great clips online if you want to check this out. Um, just look up like Nautilus Live Octopus Garden, um, and there's some different views of these brooding octopi, just um, kind of tons of them in these crevices, um, upside down protecting their eggs. Were those near the thermal vents? Or was that a separate? Um, it's a uh, uh, dead, dead seamount, dead volcano. And uh, David's at seamount. David's at seamount, thank you. Yeah. And there's um, some 7 to 10 degree uh, water kind of running in the uh, cracks. Mm. So they seem to propagate along all the fissures in the seamount. Just a few degrees Celsius warmer, yeah. and uh, but um, low in oxygen, so it, it's kind of a trade-off, I guess, from what I understand. So they have to um, uh, keep the water flowing over there, over their brood. Oh, okay. Keep them oxygenated. At a certain point, there's only so much you can eat. I mean, you've got to take a break, don't you think? Little critters. Wow. Okay, you can uh, go wide. Then. Yeah, they're just yeah, going. Good yeah. Thing. Wow. Zoom in just a bit for us. That's incredible. I'm trying to look up images to see what they typically look like and if these are larger in size due to That's the feeding uh, episode that they're more. having right now. Yeah, probably for the small amphipods, uh, it's more like moving communities that one group comes and feeds, they move away, and then another group probably comes in. And this itself will be a source of nutrition for a very long time, and because, uh, so nutrition of food is a scarcity in the deep sea, so whenever there is a source, it's, it's not that they eat in small portions and uh, it's spaced out, but it is more like reserving the energy, so... Hmm. One of my favorite documentaries of all times is My Octopus Teacher. Yeah, mm. I watched so that. Good. And if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. Yeah, that's a great one. I went tide pooling once uh, where I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I was in San Pedro. And uh, we were just looking at all the creatures that were, you know, in the tide pools, mostly urchins and sea hares, um, some, you know, lots of algae. But one day, after many years of tide pooling in that same area, I got to see an octopus, like, maybe oh. a month after I saw that documentary. Oh, that's so um, nice. So that was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've gotten to see a few while scuba diving, but not that many. It's very rare. Yeah, you have to be kind of clever. They'll pop yeah. up after you swim over them, so you've got to look behind you. Some people have a natural squid eye, right, Jacob? <laughs> <laughs> Jacob stepped out, but... Oh, uh, yeah. If you've got squid eye, you probably Jacob, see him all the time. Jacob has left the room. 
I bet Jacob's got squid eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one time my most special octopus memory is um, I was snorkeling and I saw two um, two of them and they were kind of doing like a courtship. Um, oh. So one of them was displaying these crazy colors and like textures like red to white and the other one was kind of sitting there like, ah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know impressed. if I want to do this, yeah, and then yeah. they're no, kind of doing a right chase around. around, and I think I just, like, stayed in that one spot for, like, an hour watching these. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's Where like, was I hope I'm not intrudu intruding. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that, Kara? Um, that was um, in off the waters of this island called Morea. Okay. It's about, mm. um, it's kind of next to Tiki, yeah. Wow, that must have been very special. Yeah, it was a really amazing encounter. Um, and I used to help my friend also untangle underwater fishing line there as well. And one time I went down to untangle it and it was stuck on a rock. And then, um, like, it was so funny. There's an octopus right there uh -huh. on that rock. And then I was like, oh, my God. And the octopus was also <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> we both surprised each other. Um, so it's really, it's so, like, they're so charismatic and, like, interesting, mm -hmm. intelligent, right? Very so. intelligent, yeah. And you said, um, Taylor Ann, that those little creatures are amphipods, right? Um, yeah. So we had a commenter asking if they were shrimp, but they're more like relatives of shrimp, right? Amphipods? Yeah, so they're not quite shrimp. Um, so there are uh, amphipods in the shallow waters as well. Not quite as big that I've seen as these. Yeah. Um, there are so amphipods in yeah. several amphipods in the shallow waters. Right. They're about to get bigger. Uh, just an update for this dive, uh, we will be extending it for 12 hours, so we will not be coming up um, at 4. We will be coming up at 4 in the morning tomorrow instead. Um, and our uh, next course of action is to continue up um, until waypoint 5, and I think once we hit that, we will skip waypoint 6 and cut straight to 7. Okay, Roger. Thank you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Thanks so much for the update. Who may be the watch that sees some of the top of the seamount then? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But I really hope Virginia can join in because I know it's part of her research, looking for those um, trawling indicators. So now that I know it's extended, I, I feel like we can stay here for a while and watch this wonderful moment. Yeah, for sure. It would be amazing to have like a time lapse of this. I know we can't, but yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. But yeah, we can go ahead and move on and see what else there is in the area and see if we see any living um, octopods. How does that sound? Okay. Yeah. Everybody ready? Yeah, we're good. Amazing. What's that? I can't hear it. Still didn't hear it. 
And thank you everyone tuning in from Canada, Australia, Japan, UK, Very Philippines, Italy, Germany, and Brazil. Um, we are currently exploring an unnamed seamount in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National up, uh, Monument. Um, just viewing this octopi that was octopus that was getting um, eaten by some um, crustaceans. So uh, definitely stay tuned and uh, see what the ocean will reveal. Jacob, you've heard the term squid eye? You on SPL? Sorry, not on SPL, yes. Um, yeah, we call it taco eye. Taco eye. Yeah. Have you, I, got, you got taco eye. Huh? I do not. My cousins do. They always tease me when we go uh. that I do not have one. <laughs> um, and we're referring to taco eye as in when you're diving, free diving, if we're trying to. Um, go catch octopus for parties or whatever. Um, there's the holes that they live in and you can tell by like either regular holes or like the rubble. You can kind of, um, guys can tell from the surface. They're like, oh, there's a taco in that hole or um, there's rubble, you know, and I'm not good and my, my eye isn't that good, but I have many, many cousins and friends that have taco eyes. So shout out to them, still learning, still learning. Thanks for sharing, Jacob. And um, just to clarify for any viewers, I think it's taco eyes because taco is um, octopus in Japanese, right? Yes. Not um, taco like Taco Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. T-A-K-O. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? That's our first, um, the yellow stock sponge back there. Is, uh, I haven't seen that one yet. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> aptly named by a geologist as a Dr. Seuss sponge. Uh, we are seeing a metallogorge, yeah, and I'm not sure if we have seen one on this dive. We surely haven't seen a metallogorge on our shift. And there's a wonderful uh, euplectelid uh, sponge as well, the same kind that we were seeing last night or this morning with a different kind of a crinoid, a more darker red crinoid sitting perched on top of it. And uh, The euplectelid was This one, which is, yeah, the Voltaria genus. And we are continu continuing to see the uh, Hemichorallium sure. fans mm -hmm. and several of the Chrysogorgids. Uh, I'll be. I'm just gonna step out for a moment. Uh, yeah, I'll be back. Oh yeah.
the still cam looks pretty too. Yes, absolutely. There are some big ophiroids on those um, hemichoraliums. That's probably a pseudoanthomastis closed up that's looking like a red ball more towards the center of the screen on the lower face of the, the, the overhanging of the cliff. And that's something that we're seeing after, uh, after quite a while. Yes, that definitely is a pseudoanthomastis. There's some big chrysogorgids, a ferrate sponge. Looks like there are some iridogorgids in the background. And for some additional context for our new viewers, um, we currently are on this unnamed sea mount. We have a dive going on this. Uh. Um, and it's about 100 nautical miles north of the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge. <laughs> The summit is about um, at 800 meters, and we're slowly making our way up yeah, the ridge uh, towards the summit. Get one going there. Write some numbers down. You can write them in the red book if you want. As we continue in this seamount, we we are collecting um, high resolution imagery, uh, some physical samples of the corals. Um, rocks, and um, really just been so amazed so far by uh, the amount of corals and the size of them as well, and also the very dramatic landscape in this particular area of the seamount. So um, there's definitely been some really amazing highlights um, and biological communities here. Yes, absolutely. And we are again coming up <coughs> on another metallogorgia. I think we will be gradually seeing more of the metallogorgias. Uh, that would be another. Could you share a little bit more about that? Why you um, are expecting to see more um, of that particular type of coral? Uh, so pre so it's uh, we have been seeing a gradual change in the community composition, and we were seeing a lot of chrysogorgias with some iridogorgias and we are gradually uh, five, seeing three, lesser numbers of those and there's a gradual increase in or we are seeing the metallogorgias more frequently so given how this seamount has been i feel that there's a gradual change in uh, the assemblage and uh, give it following that pattern i f expect more metallogorgias and i think we have in the last couple of minutes seen at least four or five of them. Oh, wow. Do you think it's like related to the oh, current? Or? Probably, yeah. Uh, okay. The current, uh. which the recruitment process, the current bringing in the nutrients. Mm, gotcha. 
Um, so like a stronger current here or weaker, or we're not sure? Uh, we're not sure. We're not sure, okay. And any changes with um, like the sponges and our tuna kit fan is tuning in again, <laughs> asking about tuna kit. So have there been any other, aside from the corals, um, different community changes? Uh, uh, in the sponges, we were seeing more of the cyclocalyxes uh, earlier. We are still seeing them, but not that frequently. Uh, we haven't seen any tunicates uh, so far, Excel at least on our watches. Uh, sea stars have been, a, I would feel, we have encountered more sea stars now than in our early morning shift. Ophiroids have been more consistent, but they are also more found on uh, the chrysogorges. The basket stars, we don't see them. We are not seeing as many as we were a uh, little while ago. So, because we were seeing the basket stars mostly associated with the very large hemichorallium fans and around those. So I think as we are gradually seeing uh, less of those, we are not seeing the basket stars so much as well. The Ophiroids are still hanging around. Uh, we are seeing ferrate sponges, which we didn't see earlier in the morning. So there has been some changes other than the corals as well. Awesome, thank you for that overview. Really helpful update of um, kind of these broader patterns that we're seeing. Yeah, yeah, everyone, I just wanted to provide a, a quick update on Come the plans five. for this dive. Uh, so it's currently two o'clock local time here in Hawaii. The original plan had us coming up at four o'clock, so two hours from now. Uh, we are gonna modify this plan, uh, as is the name of the game. Um, so, um, Basically, we're going to extend this dive by 12 full hours. So basically, uh, extending it till 4 in the morning. That's when the ROV will be on deck. Uh, and the reason for that is basically we wanted to, on this dive, survey both uh, the ridges and then also the top of the seamount where it gets more uh, uh, flatter and where we might expect to see some trawling impacts. And that's a part of the objectives of the dive. However, the terrain has been pretty steep and uh, there's also been a lot of things to zoom in as a, and as a result we haven't covered as much ground as we hoped for uh, so we'll just extend the dive by full 12 hours so that means uh, on deck at four in the morning um, and it'll be a you know a hour and a half ascent so probably around 2 30 that will leave uh, the surface uh, so we'll, we'll update everybody on shore and uh, yeah thanks so much Thank you so much for that. Thanks, for the Thanks Daniel. Daniel. Oh, much appreciated. Well, Waypoint three, here we come. I hear things are good at Waypoint three. <laughs> More octopi. We're about 230 meters away from Waypoint three. Horizontally or vertically? Yeah, no, horizontally. <laughs> right, right, vertical is. Uh, vertical it's more quite a lot more what's the depth at waypoint three how um, about i phrase it that way yeah so hmm. we're 17 and 65 now one Yeah, one one more thing. Uh, yeah, Pashana brought up a good point. So yeah, since we are we're we're really hoping to get to the top of the seamount, uh, what we'll probably also want to do is uh, once we get up to waypoint five. For those of you who are seeing the the dive plan, uh, that is basically where the 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 seamount starts plateauing. We'll head straight to waypoint seven, so not meander along the ridge, but basically cut straight across, and that should. Uh, also save us a little time. Um, yeah, we, we expect to see here at the, at the top of the ridge probably quite a bit more marine life, and, and obviously we'll take our time to get close-ups of things that we haven't seen on, on the dive, but you know, for anything that we have, we just try to keep a good pace. Uh, so yeah, the, the real intention is to get to the top of that seamount where we might see some, some trawling scars and other potential impacts. Understood.
I think it's about a 130 meter climb vertically, if I'm counting the contours right. According to the dive profile, this uh, we started at 2100 between, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at waypoint three to four. So. Oh, you can do eyes over run and figure out what the slope is. Interesting math. Yeah, I just was looking at the wrong points. Or you could fire up Flight or Mouse and give us a 3D presentation. <laughs> we have done that before. Mostly when it's uh, not so dense. Yeah. I have enough screens to look at come right up, now. Come up uh, five for me. Yep. Yeah, it's more of a blue water exercise or... Yeah. Flat bathymetry exercise. There's a huge sponge on the top of wherever we're going to. You see it on Atlanta. Are you any good with that program? Oh, uh, flatter mouse? I've only used it when I was on the Okeanos. Mm, we have it here. If I was a super user, I'd bring it up. But well, yeah, there's I'm enough to look at I right can now. I barely right click in that thing. Yeah, and then continue. ArcGIS, however, that I'm a pro, which is a bit of a pun because it's Arc Pro, but but I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else got it. Up five, please. No, I missed it. It's all over my head. Yeah, as we are continuing to move uh, well, towards yeah. waypoint three, we are uh, seeing some. Uh, we are continuing to see the Chrysogorgias, some Metallogorgias. Uh, that looks like a beautiful oh, Roselid sponge, right a glass sponge. Uh, we are again seeing some uh, Pseudoanthomastis, uh, the Volteria euplectelid sponges. So yeah, it has been an interesting climb gradually up along the slopes and that is that is a wonderful sponge. Yeah, that's really huge. That was I think the sponge Jacob was just mentioning, really huge sponge. Is that an oddly shaped base or a white sea star on there? There's a white sea star on the base. Really blends in, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it just blends in, probably in the family sto Solasterid. It's one of the Solasterid sea stars. Wow, such a good eye. I totally thought it was like a weird <laughs> peduncle <laughs> or something. It's my sea star eye. <laughs> sea star spotter, yeah. Living up to her title. Big sponge. So sea star hanging out or is it feeding? Uh probably feeding. Down five for me. I'm going to calibrate. Come down another five. I uh, 
would correct my ID for it, I would say that this is a stocked euplectalid and not a uh, stocked rosalid. Now that I'm having a better look at the back side of the sponge where Downtown. the top part joins right. the stalk. So I would say that it's a stalked euplectalid in the genus Bolosoma. The genus Bolosoma has a lot of uh, variability in it. Yeah, uh, we can gradually continue once everybody is happy. Yeah, we're on our way. What's that? Oh, uh, we can continue on. Yeah, I do. We don't want a close up of the sea stock. I thought you hated them seeing them eat. Only when their guts are hanging out. Hate is a pretty strong word. I wouldn't use that word. Weird, <laughs> weirded out? Ghost out is probably. <laughs> Not fond of. <laughs> I didn't uh, know sea stars could um, be predators of sponges. What other um, organisms tend to eat sponges in the deep sea? Or we're not really sure about no, it? No, probably sea st some sea stars do feed on the... Uh, on the base? On the base of um, the tissue, yeah. But we haven't seen a lot of predation on the sponges. Right. Mayowen, what's the last time you moved the ship? Because these... Um, towards the beginning of our shift. So it's been, we've only had one move together, that 10 meter move. Roger. I was looking at maybe, I don't know how you feel about 210 when you're ready, but. 210. As the bearing. Mm. Uphill is uh, west. Yeah. Because you guys are facing 270. Yeah. Good for 20 meters west. 20 meters, 270? Yeah, right. Bridge nav. Can we please step 20 at 270? Thank you. Coming back to your question, Canada, from earlier, uh, mm -hmm. another reason why probably we don't see uh, much of active predation on the glass sponges is because their tissue is mostly made up of siliceous spicules. Right. So they are not very good sources of nutrition right. for the other organisms and also can be very difficult to digest. Right, it's like basically crunching on glass shards. That's exactly. <laughs> so that is probably one reason why we don't see a lot of predation on the glass sponges. Um, I would think that there's, uh, I'm not sure about the, uh, con if the stalks have lesser concentration right. of the spicules, if that is so, uh, it, it is probably why we see some sea stars around the bases, but not mm -hmm. much higher up along the, right. on the sponges. <coughs> Look down just a bit for me. Good, thanks. Yep. And we had a viewer ask, do those sponges feel like popcorn? Um, so these siliceous spicules um, are basically made of glass, like sili silicon, siliceous, um, silicon dioxide. So um, it's kind of like these little glass shards suspended in like another um, material that's uh, maybe more like um, not quite popcorn and soft like that um, texture, but it has a little bit of resistance to it. Um, kind of like what you would think with a sponge um, normally, maybe a little firmer than a kitchen sponge. Although I haven't actually handled any deep sea sponges, so I'm just talking about shallow water sponges here. Um, but when we used to sample shallow water sponges, we would always advise people to be careful not to get what we called sponge hand because they would get spicules in there. 
um, fingers, and then it would kind of feel a little bit like if you've ever had like fiberglass. I was winters. just gonna say like fiberglass. Yeah. Yeah, like fiberglass. So um, probably not something we want to touch too much. No. <laughs> I helped my dad build a, f a, f a fence with fiberglass posts, and he didn't warn me ahead oh, of no. time, and I. I Itchy. grabbed right onto that fence post. Oh, no. I'll never forget that lesson. <laughs> yeah, we are seeing some very wonderful Chrysogorgia colonies. There was another Bolosoma uh, glass sponge at the tucked in the bottom, some crinoids, hemichorallium, again, one of those very large hemichorallium fans. As we continue moving upslope, right? Upslope. I imagine. Yep. West. Westward ho. Mm hmm West side, the best side. And we just had some shout outs from our previous ship to shore Push from in. Push in there for me. Those at Moss Creek. Thanks for tuning in after your ship to shore and um uh thanks for joining us and uh staying curious as we explore this seamount. Um, please feel free to keep asking your questions. Great, and also, a, yeah. also a shout out for Taylor Ann and Jacob, just saying you guys are doing awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a cup of coral and we see some squat lobsters in the Chrysogorgia. Okay, go ahead, thanks. Very nice. Can we get a quick zoom on this, please? What was that? Uh, can we get a quick zoom on this uh, paragorgia, please? A zoom? Yeah. Sure. Those basket stars? On yes, the corner? yes, those are basket stars. Yeah, this looks like a. Any particular area you want to see closely? Uh, wherever we can have a look at the polyps. Uh, not too close to the basket stars, probably. Uh, polyps are under. under. I think I see a tiny little sea star hanging out on the north uh, left. It's interesting because I was when Kara and I did the last ship to shore. She was we were talking about the colors. And everything is there's a lot of pink. Do you want to? Can you go over that again, Kara? Oh yeah, like there are so many. Um, and Upashana mentioned this yeah. earlier. Like these pink colors, these red colors are very common in the deep. Um, and we were talking about how red is the first. Um, wavelength of light, visible light that gets absorbed by um, the ocean water. So really when you're at these great depths, um, red things kind of appear brown or black or pretty much in this case invisible since there's really little light to begin, uh, begin with here. So 
um, pretty amazing. Yeah, lots of these stunning colors. And then it looks like there's like a yellow crinoid mm -hmm. on there too. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Janet, full zoom there. Wow, what a beautiful zoom. Are they retracted or do you think yes, they're? Yeah, yes, okay. yes, yeah. they're retracted. And what kind of coral was this again? Uh, a paragorgia. Okay. So these are the uh, bubblegum corals. Gotcha, thank you. Still yes. got to make those flashcards. <laughs> are we good? Mm -hmm. We are good. Thank you. We can continue moving. Thank you. Yeah, there are at least two different kinds of basket stars. There's a, there are squat lobsters and crinoids. And Asako, as, as Asako rightly stated, that it is a very well de decorated coral file. Do you think the basket stars add any significant weight to this coral, like affecting how it grows or if it topples eventually or anything like that? Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure they add some weight, but given how big the fans are, probably they don't add any risk to them toppling over. But I'm sure they must be adding some weight given how many <laughs> there are. Right. All those arms. Yes. It's so beautiful. How old do you think that is? Oh, I don't know. I would say maybe a couple of hundred years. Uh, I think it's only five or six centuries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Or millennia. <laughs> All right, we're good. And we noticed we have some new viewers tuning in from uh, Palau. Um, Elsie, did you want to give them a shout out and also just share about uh, your experience on the ship, like these deep sea coral corals versus what you've been seeing at um, Palau International Coral Reef Center? Yeah, thanks, Kara and Ali. El mar rokol other bela alo yung sertiang, ang mga mga artiang ang mga the bel, the bela Hawaii alo mesaikal maran the mga rangwa Um, so. It's quite interesting. Uh, Palau is known uh, for its coral diversity. We have okay. Okay, uh, over 1,400 spe or sorry, 1,400 or 1,700 uh, species of shallow water corals, and also uh, close to 500 species of reef fish. So um, we have our own biodiversity that we're used to. So it's been really interesting and eye-opening to see that it's not just in shallow water, but also here deep down, right, that yeah. we can see that as well. So really happy to see people streaming. Um, and that's the great thing about what we're doing here at Nautilus Live is that it's available to people all over the world. And um, yeah, thanks yeah. Kara for that. And yeah. I see there's someone from Guam as well. Yeah, <laughs> have a day. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. <laughs> 